the winter season just arrived, and what a better way to forget about 2021 than with a new batch of seasonal animes. And I know what you're thinking. It feels like every season we're getting less and less animes, but what this season lacks in quantity, it's compensated in quality. Or at least on the returning animes. We got the return of the Titans with Attack on Titan final season starting with a banger. Demon Slayer finally gave a new arc with a bit of controversy sprinkled on top. Princess Connect keeps proving us that Konosuba formula actually works. Takagi-san still warms my heart with some fun and wholesome moments. And we got some other shows like Banitas, Arifureta or Realist Hero for the vampire and anisekai fandom. What else could you ask for? Oh, I see. Guys. Who keeps asking for these x arm shows? Now imagine this. You and your buddy are walking home after a night drinking, and all of a sudden, a naked goddess transfers you to a different world and transforms your friend into a cute girl. Now, let's add a chorus that makes you fall in love with each other the longer you take to defeat the demon lord. Well, that's what you get in Fantasy Bishoyo. Honestly, this is one of the funniest shows of the season with the dynamic between two friends trying not to fall into temptation while overpowering their way through a fantasy world, it is exactly the type of relaxed comedy that we need after watching some titans beat the crap out of each other. On the fantasy side, we also got a rip-off of Kenja no Majo, a copy of Overlord and another rip-off of Overlord, but this one I actually liked. In the land of Leado, focuses on Keina, a young girl plays on life support and playing a PR MMO, that after a blackout, dies, and her mind is transported 200 years later into the game world. While it is not exactly the best show, I think that the interactions and actions of the characters feels more realistic than other shows of this season, and overall, the story about her meeting the offsprings of people that lived 200 years ago gives some good plot progression. Now for the realist hero lovers, we got a similar show in the Genius Prince Guide to Raising a Nation Out of Death. Following the laid-back prince who just wants to abdicate, his life is thrown upside down after a series of unexpected victories. I got to admit, while the animation quality and the story are not exactly top-notch, I can still appreciate the delivery and the characters' interactions. I especially enjoy the way they show blood and killings. Rather than something made to provoke feelings in the watcher, they are using it as a necessary means for plot progression. Next, we move from the European fantasy side to a more Mad Max style of fantasy with Sabiko Ibisco. I honestly had high expectations for this one. With a unique story and a stacked staff that worked on some huge shows before, I have to say that so far I'm not impressed. The story feels empty, the plot progression has been weird, especially with the first two episodes jumping between day and night. While I still think that it has some potential, it has to do something soon or else I will probably stop watching it after episode 3. And the same can be said about Orient, a new manga made by the author of Magi. You can still see its art style and writing in there, but so far it hasn't impressed me. It just feels like any other shows airing this season that I will probably won't remember once it ends. And talking about disappointing shows? Tribe 9 was looking to be the next Danganronpa, with its art style and its game-inspired plot, but so far it just feels like it's a blatant attempt to promote the game rather than presenting us with a good anime. Same goes for Doll's Frontline that is just trying to entice us with the beautiful waifus and one of the best opening songs of the season. So I'm not just a doll you manipulate. Oh god, that's so good. But it's a boring and slow story that just leaves a lot to desire. But if there is a competitor for best opening of the season, it has to be Tokyo 24 Ku. You can never go wrong with Survive Say the Prophet. With an original story focusing on three distant friends that are given two choices in a type of trolley ethical dilemma and some good animation so far, I'm still a bit hesitant to give it a good review, but so far it's looking like one of the better new shows of the season. While some of the new action-packed shows are a bit disappointing this season, the slice of life is hitting hard. First, let's talk about Hakosume. Following the life of a female police officer, when I first started watching this one, I thought it was just going to be another simple comedy. But soon, 
I found out that it was a bit deeper than that. With a similar art and feeling to Wave Listen to Me, this show focuses on the growth of the female officer as she learns how to become a better police officer in a world where everyone hates cops and nothing is what it seems. Giving some hard-hitting life lessons, this one is for the ones who want something a bit deep. But if you're looking for something more lighthearted, Slow Loop follows the life of two new stepsisters that bond over fishing. Or how about some BL? With Sasaki and Miyano, that is basically the perfect slow-paced romance comedy if you are into BL. Or if you're more into the comedy side, we also have Miss Kuroitsu from the Monster Development Department, where a hardworking girl works as a corporate slave for an evil organization that fights Power Rangers. Yep, it's exactly how it sounds. Anyway, this is just a fun, simple show about uh, corporate life as well as a bit of tropes on superhero shows. And it is funny to see how the monsters start from something huge and cool to funny and cute after all the revisions from each department. Is it just me or does that thing look a bit weird? I just can't point out what it is. Hmm. Yo, that thing looks like a t Moving on, I want to finish this video with the greatest debate of the season. Horny or cute? This season brings two of the strongest contenders for the best girl of the year. First we have a KB sailor uniform. Your typical slice of life vanilla yuri anime about a cute girl who wants to wear the sailor uniform of a prestigious high school. And while the story is just cute girls doing cute stuff. Oh my god, how can they be this cute? Especially those still images with the music playing in the background. How can something so simple fill my heart with warm and fuzzy feelings? On the other side, we got my dress up darling, following the story of a guy that loves Hina figures and a girl who loves to cosplay. It is the typical rom-com with a single heroine that we have seen many times before. So why is everyone so excited about this one? Well, because she's horny. Yeah, everyone can relate to her enjoying her hobbies without feeling of shame, only to realize later that maybe she's acting a bit too familiar with the guy sometimes. And I'm sure a lot of people are not only watching it because of the <clears throat> plot, but I'm personally really enjoying the dynamic between these two characters and it feels really wholesome at times, but mostly horny. And those are the animes of the season. While there aren't as many good animes this season, some of them have some really high ceilings, and if not, we can all just enjoy Attack on Titan. Thank you for watching, see you guys next time.